sermon exercise. Anne Pettit. Our sure foundation. The Monday night small group Bible study explored homiletics, how to give sermons. And we each gave a short sermon as an exercise. This is my contribution. We targeted Trinity Sunday, whose lectionary readings can be found at https colon forward slash forward slash lectionary dot library dot vanderbilt dot edu forward slash texts dot php question mark id equals 202 and consist of Isaiah 6, 1 through 8, Psalm 29, Romans 8, 12 through 17, and John 3, 1 through 17. And those are the readings for Trinity Sunday, May 30th, 2021. Dearest God and Father, I pray that my words may be no stumbling block and that the prayers of our hearts may be pure. Send down your love as we praise you. Amen. I've noticed that when a group of people who don't know each other very well come together in California, a general conversation quite soon will turn to earthquakes. The recent close ones come up first. Did you feel that 4.0 with the epicenter in Koalinga last week? Progressing often to details of the bigger quakes. I was out of town during the Loma Prieta or my refrigerator hopped all the way across the kitchen. Then to who was in the North Ridge or the San Fernando, and finally on to the big quake, meaning 1906 San Francisco, all the upset and destruction and tumult. The huge earth, the strength of our foundations moved, a frightening and dangerous thing has happened to all humankind, and we want we need to talk about it. There are two earthquakes in the readings for today. In Isaiah, during his vision of the Lord enthroned in splendor, those wild many winged seraphs attending God are singing. They are calling, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Yes, a wonderful sentiment. Surely a good and true word of praise. Let's try it. Unmute yourselves, everyone, and let's say it together, loud and clear. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of your glory. It's easy to overwhelm the Zoom audio, but the seraphs shout this praise so thunderously, so mightily, that the building is shaken to its thresholds and the house is filled with smoke. So once more, really loud. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Now that's something. We can make a pretty loud shout of praise, but such a cataclysmic praise of God that it shakes the earth. No, it must be seraphs and not ordinary humans that are doing the praising if it causes earthquakes. And here's poor Isaiah, 
seeing these wild creatures who are making a deafening noise that is shaking the earth. Yow! No wonder Isaiah feels unequal to the experience. I think Isaiah is doing really well not to faint. Even an ordinary earthquake is enough to make me jittery and weaken my knees. Then a seraph comes with tongs and a hot coal and purifies Isaiah, making him fit for service to God. A hot coal, yikes. Is purification always painful? A hot coal to the lips sure sounds painful. But cleansed, Isaiah answers God's call, volunteering for he knows not what. The second earthquake in these readings is in Psalm 29. Scholars think that possibly Psalm 29 is the psalm that was written earliest. Sometimes it is called a hymn to the God of the storm. The Israelites used it during the fall feast of tabernacles as a prayer for rain. It's possible that Israel adopted it from earlier Canaanite liturgy, since the places named Lebanon, Syrian, and Kadesh were not Israelite territory in those earliest days. In any case, in Psalm 29, as in the Isaiah reading, the Lord is worthy of praise. Here again, God is to be praised for his glory, strength, and holy splendor, this time by heavenly beings. But it is not the voices of the heavenly beings that cause the earthquakes in Psalm 29. It is the voice of God. And it is such a mighty voice that it breaks huge trees. God's voice flashes out in fire and makes the ground skip and cavort like frisky young animals. What magnitude earthquake do you suppose that is? Maybe a hundred? Surely I would think that the end of time had come if I saw and felt the earth heaving like a bouncing lamb. Even though we Californians are used to earthquakes. But Psalm 29 also tells us that this astoundingly powerful God, enthroned as king forever, will give his strength to us, his people. This mighty God will bless us, his people, with peace. God will save us if we, like Isaiah, will say yes to God's call, even though we have been painfully cleansed of unclean lips. God will save us even if we are frightened nearly to death by his majesty. God will save us if we listen to his spirit, become his children, and go where he sends us. So when the earthquake happens in your mind, in the earth, in your life, or in your soul even, remember the peace that Jesus gave us. Remember the helper we have in the Holy Spirit. And remember God's mighty blessing. Amen.